Season 2 is finally here in Warzone 2, and so I've got the best settings that you need to be running if you want to maximize your FPS and improve your visibility inside of Al Mazra and Ashika Island. Starting off in-game in the display tab of the graphics options, display mode needs to be set to full screen exclusive. Do not go with full screen borderless. Yes, it's nice to be able to alt tab in and out of the game, but it will affect your latency. Full screen exclusive ensures that the game gets priority access to all the resources it needs while it's running. Display monitor and display adapter just make sure you've got the correct monitor and GPU shown here and screen refresh rate make sure this matches with the refresh rate of your monitor. Dynamic resolution we're going to keep this off it's not a method we're going to be using to gain FPS there's far better methods which I'll explain in just a minute. Then aspect ratio a lot of you guys are likely going to be playing with 16 by 9 monitors like 1440p or 1080p. If you're playing with an ultra wide monitor however make sure you've got the correct thing selected down here but for most of us guys playing Warzone probably on 16 by 9. V-Sync needs to be off for gameplay and menus. Whilst V-Sync is good for reducing screen tearing, it is not worth it for the amount of input lag it adds to your game while running it. For the frame rate limit, I know a lot of people just set this unlimited and leave it, but I'd actually recommend you set up a custom setup, something like this. So gameplay custom frame rate limit, we're putting that all the way to the max, essentially unlimited. We are giving the game the breathing room to achieve whatever FPS it can inside of the game. For the menus though, we can actually limit this to what is still a smooth frame rate of 100, but it means that while we're navigating our menus, our PC isn't chugging away, chucking out a load of frames that it really doesn't need to. And then the out of focus frame rate limit, I've turned this all the way down to 30. So if I alt tab out the game and decide I'm gonna quickly do something in my internet browser, my whole PC isn't gonna lag under the weight of the game that, you know, 200 plus FPS whilst alt tabs. It just makes no sense, so turn it down. For the display gamma, you wanna be setting it to 2.2 if you're on a monitor or 2.4 if you're on a TV. Then brightness, a lot of people leave this at 50. I'd actually recommend you turn it up to 55. It gives a nice overall boost to the visibility inside of the game. Ignore this not visible, barely visible, easily visible thing. Give it that little five boost. You'll be able to see a lot more in those dark areas. And then for HDR, even if you have a HDR monitor, you want to keep this off in order to improve our visibility in game. Moving on to the quality tab, quality presets. It's going to become custom anyway when we change all these. So don't worry what you set here. Render resolution, leave this at 100% so that we are rendering out at our native resolution from this setting. For the upscaling slash sharpening setting, I'm actually going to give you three different options depending on what scenario you're in and what you're actually trying to achieve from your settings. So the first option is for anyone who is happy to take a slight performance hit in order to achieve the best visibility possible and a really nice sharp image. And that is going to be using Fidelity FX Cast. Now, this does reduce your FPS by, you know, 2% or so, which is a fairly substantial hit for some people, but it does give really nice sharpening. Then for the Fidelity FX cast strength, this is actually just personal preference. This slider has no effect on performance. It's not like turning it up, lowers your FPS more than having it halfway. I like it at 100 to give the maximum sharpness. Option number two, if you want to keep your game looking sharp, but you don't want any of the performance hit that you get from running Fidelity FX CAS, you can actually set this to off, which will mean there's no sharpening happening from the in-game settings. And then I've actually got a video, which I'll link in the description below, which shows you how to activate sharpening in your GPU software, which has no performance hit. So go check that out after this video, if that sounds like something you're interested in. And finally, if you're just craving some more FPS and you're happy to take a slight visibility dip, and I'm talking very, very slight for some very nice performance gain, you can run this at AMD FSR, which is an upscaling method. So it actually renders your game out at a lower resolution and then upscales it so it still looks nice and clear. And then just make sure you've got the preset set at ultra quality. Once again, I've got a whole video covering all of the different upscaling options, and I'll have that link down below as well with all the benchmarks. For the anti-aliasing, if you're struggling with FPS then you're gonna have to set this to SMAA rather than filmic because it does gain you a little but nice performance boost however having this set to this option gives these horribly grainy shadows like dots all over the walls you might have seen it before and the way that you fix that is by running this at filmic which is why I am running it at filmic and I'd recommend if you can you give this option a go. For the video memory scale, a lot of people seem to still be running this at 90, thinking that that's going to give the game as much VRAM as possible in order to gain FPS. But actually, this just causes stutters in game. It's one of the main causes of stuttering. So if you're running a mid-range GPU, something which is, you know, not, not the best by any means, maybe, you know, it's not, not a 30 or a 40 series,
series Nvidia card. It's just something in the middle. Then run this around 60 or 70 and see if it helps your performance out. For anyone who is running a 30 or even a 40 series card, drop this all the way down to 50. It's going to help out with your stuttering and your 1% lows in game a ton. If you're finding the information and settings in this video today to be informative or helpful, then please consider subscribing down below. It means the world to me to be building this community with my viewers. It only takes one click and you can click the notification bell to be the first people to be notified anytime I find any new tweaks or secret settings that might be a game changer. Texture resolution, I'd recommend you run this at low. It looks considerably better than very low, but it doesn't stress your VRAM out as much as normal or high, so it gives very nice performance. And then a very similar thing for texture filter and isotropic. This is basically all to do with how do textures look when you're not looking at them head on. So this ground here, which we're looking at from a slight angle, Similar thing, normal looks better than low, has very, very similar performance and high takes away a little bit more performance than we'd like. For the nearby level of detail and distant level of detail, this has very little effect on your visuals in game and it does touch on your FPS maybe one or 2%. So I'd recommend you just keep them at low. For clutter draw distance, you'll notice there's nothing actually in the box here, even though there is a short and a long option. It doesn't matter what you set here because later in this video, I'm gonna show you a config file tweak that's gonna allow you to set this to a set that really helps your FPS out. So don't worry about this setting right now. Then particle quality, just shove this to low. This mainly affects how fire and things like thermites look. It does have a performance hit. So I'd recommend you keep it on low. And the same thing goes for particle quality level, which I keep at very low. Then bullet impact and sprays. I guess this is personal preference. It doesn't have an effect on FPS. I personally like to see bullet impact in game, so I keep them on, but personal preference. Persistent damage layers, turn these off. This is all about visual effects left from explosions and stuff. It doesn't have much of a performance effect, but it can be quite distracting. So I like to keep these off. For shader quality, when the game first came out, a lot of people were running this on medium because low major camos, especially gold camo, look terrible. But that has been fixed now. Low shaders look absolutely fine for your camos, and this gives a massive FPS boost over medium or high. Tessellation is something we really don't care about. It affects scene geometry, how the ground looks and how realistic it looks. Not something we care about whatsoever. And then terrain memory, interesting enough, turning this up to max gives a nice boost to the clarity of textures uh, without actually affecting FPS at all. So this is a nice little secret setting you can turn up to gain a little bit more visual fidelity. On-demand texture streaming is completely unnecessary. We definitely don't want to be downloading high quality textures while we're playing the game and filling up your hard drive with unnecessary textures. Just definitely keep this off. And then streaming quality. This appears to have very little effect on anything in game. It sort of seems to affect how things look at far distances and how clear things look, but really the difference is so minimal that I would recommend you keep it at low. Volumetric quality is a massive FPS hog. It affects how these light rays and fog and things like that look in game. You have to keep this to low. Anything higher and you'll start losing multiple percentages of FPS on top of each other. So yeah, keep it at low. Deferred physics quality and water core sticks both need to be off. They're meant to affect how water looks inside of Warzone 2, but they seem to have little to no effect on the visual fidelity of the water all they do is kill your fps anytime you're near a river or near the sea so definitely keep them off shadow map resolution i'd recommend you put this at low rather than very low it does give a nice performance boost bringing this down from some of these higher options but very low looks absolutely terrible in game so i think low is a good balance screen space shadows are the shadows that appear on your operator's hand and on the gun as you're moving around i'd recommend you just keep these off they do have a performance here and they don't add anything to the game as such similar thing for spot shadow quality it's just not something we care about so we need to keep it on its lowest setting but spot cache put this on high as a minimum i know it says effect on vram high so you might go whoa i want to stay away from this but actually this has been shown to help out with stuttering in warzone 2 a hell of a lot. So I'd recommend you put this on high. If you're still having stuttering problems, you can actually also put it on ultra and that might help out as well. But start with high and see if it helps you out. Particle lighting, similar to the particle quality earlier on. We don't care about it. Keep it on low. And then ambient occlusion. This is the shadows that appear in corners, as you can see here, a lot more shadowy and dark here than over here. This actually just 
nerfs your visibility completely. It makes corners harder to spot people in, so definitely keep ambient occlusion off. The next three options, screen space reflections, static reflection quality, and weather grid volumes, just put these all on their lowest or off settings. They're not things we care about. Let me now explain how you should set NVIDIA Reflex low latency. If you have a very strong GPU and a CPU that's probably lagging behind it in some way, you know, you're just running a CPU that just gets by enough to not be holding back your GPU in your gaming PC, then on plus boost is the best option. You can see here, the on plus boost is for situations where you are CPU bound. So it's your CPU that is probably holding you back more than your GPU. However, if your GPU and your CPU are sort of on par or even maybe your CPU is better than your GPU then you want to run this at on that's the situation I'm in I've got a strong CPU and a strong GPU so on is the best option and then these last four settings they're all post-processing effects that we do not want on so turn them all off and to zero then in the view area I'd recommend you're maxing out your FOV to ensure we're getting the maximum amount of information possible at any one time in Warzone you don't want something happening off your screen that you could have seen by turning up your FOV. ADS FOV, make sure this is on affected. This ensures that when you ADS, you don't go really, really zoomed in and increase a lot of the visual recoil. Putting this to affected means you actually stay decently zoomed out and your visual recoil is a lot less. Then weapon field of view, keep this on wide. It makes your gun look a little bit further away from you, but uh, it means your gun isn't covering up as much of the screen so you can get more information in game. Third person FOV, just max this out if you're playing third person and vehicle FOV, we don't really care about. For the camera movements, put them both on least so that when your camera shakes in game, it's not putting you off too much. Once you've saved those settings, close down the game and we're going to go edit some config files to push the performance even more. So in your file explorer, go to your documents area, then head to Call of Duty, players and then you want to look for this file options.3.cod22 you might not see the .cst bit because i've got file extensions on you might just see the first three bits options 3 cod 22 you want to open this up in notepad you can do that by right clicking and selecting open with and then selecting notepad for me it will automatically open in there and you get a file that looks like this do a control f so that we can find what we're looking for first thing is going to be async compute so search for async and you'll find it down here. So async compute, by default, this is set to true. You wanna set this to false. Apparently this is something to do with how your GPU and your CPU work together in game. And it's been shown that turning this to false helps out performance and boost your FPS a little bit. Next up, you wanna search for clutter. And this is actually gonna be how you end up with the blanked out clutter draw distance setting that I mentioned earlier. By default, if you have that set at low in game, it will put this number here I think it's to 2500 but you can see the allowed range in here actually goes down to 100 so what you should do is just copy the full number here with all the zeros after the decimal point and paste it in between the inverted commas this way we've lowered the clutter distance down to the lowest value it can go and this gives a very nice FPS boost inside of your game. And the last thing we're going to change in here is right near the bottom and that is renderer worker count. This will be set at some value by default. A lot of testing has been done. The best setting for this is to set this number to the same number of cores as your CPU has. How do you find that out? I'll show you. A lot of people would just say, go to the task manager and grab the number of cores from the performance tab in there. But what I'd recommend you do is actually head to the manufacturer website, search up your uh, CPU and grab the total number of cores. So this is an example for Intel and i7-8700K, six cores, and therefore I'd put six as my renderer work account. For a AMD card, it's a similar thing. This is a uh, Ryzen 5 5600X. And you scroll to the bottom, number of CPU cores is set to six. So that's what I'd set it to in game. The difference comes from if you have a recent Intel CPU. So for example, what I have, a 12700K. These recent Intel cards have performance cores and efficient cores. So my task manager would actually show the total cores of 12. But what you want to set it to is the number of performance cores. That's why I've got mine set at eight. So if you're on a new Intel card, Intel CPU, 
you need to be setting it to the number of performance cores. Once you've done all that, you can save this and close out of this file. There's an important setting that's built into Windows that you also need to turn off. To get there, come down here and type graphics. Go to graphics settings, and you will have this option, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, or HAGS, as some people will call it. Usually, for most games, having this on helps performance, but in Warzone 2, it actually hinders your performance quite a bit. So I'd recommend if Warzone 2 is your main game you play, you turn this off. It will require a system restart, so turn it off, restart your PC, jump back in game, and you should see a performance increase. And then for anyone with an NVIDIA GPU out there, right click on your desktop, open up the NVIDIA control panel. A couple of things you can do in here which are quite nice. First thing, in adjust desktop color settings, come down to digital vibrance and give this a nice boost. By default, it's at 50 and all the colors look kind of washed out. I actually think running this at 70 gives a nice boost to the color. It's a bit of personal preference, but I think it's definitely worth it to run. And then the other very important thing to change in here is to go to manage 3D settings and then in global, scroll down to where the shader cache size is and put this up to unlimited. This is very similar to the spot cache setting that we set inside of Warzone 2 and this helps out with stuttering a ton. So definitely need to come in here and set this. In terms of all the other settings in the NVIDIA control panel for Warzone 2, I actually have an in-depth video which you can watch over here next. Gives you guys all of the best settings you need that will actually give you a nice overall performance boost as well.